Hi everybody, it's Q. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> it's Q and welcome back to my tapes. <laughs> In this video, we will be discussing Miss Lydia Dinga and a series of collaborations with a wine company before possibly starting her own. If you want to listen to this, keep on watching. Okay, for those of you who are new, I have a series on my channel called The Blueprint. It was born out of my frustration of seeing creators with distribution befall themselves <laughs> to all sorts of interesting actions, sometimes duplicitous. Check out the Mary Jane Byron video. And so I just said to myself, you know what? And I also do this in real life, um, partially. Um, I want to ideate. I want to ideate brands and ideas for creators who have distribution because there's just so many options. There's so many ways that you can go about this that maybe if you were a small creator, you probably don't have the option of doing. And so that is pretty much the premise of the Blueprint episodes, mini series. So with that said, if you have anybody that you want me to do, you need to comment below. So a few people on the list. We have Brianna, um, Monique. We have Damon, Dominique. We have um, Baby Plantain. <laughs> Shade Watkins. Um, we have Jesse Wu. We have somebody said uh, Kimberly Nicole Foster, which that is going to be a very interesting one because, you know, she's already started to set up her media company and she's made very clear terms around the sort of things that she wants to engage in in terms of monetizing her work. So that'll be really interesting to explore. And then somebody had also make an in made an interesting comment about doing another blueprint episode specifically for how Jackie Ina was able to market forever mood. Some of you had put some revenue speculations, but somebody had said, Rinter, I think this was you. Somebody had said in my comment section that they think, I estimated in my video that she probably has done around like 5 million in revenue. A few people have speculated around like probably like 10 million in revenue. So I will definitely make a blueprint video on all of these things. So if you have anybody you want me to talk about of like, what could this creator be doing? possibly, then go check it out. I actually just had another video for Kelly Stamps and some things that she can do considering some of the things she said in her videos. So with that, let us begin. Other announcements will be at the end of the video. All right, let's begin. <laughs> okay, I am super, super, super excited to go over what I came up with. I have a few ideas. I say this always, but just in case someone from your team or anybody's team of the influencers I talk about, you guys watch this, just email me if you're like, okay, can I get some more information on this? So when it comes to Lydia Dinga, what do I have to say about her? One sentence summary. Lydia Dinga is in London town, <laughs> an English um, creator that makes lifestyle content. And so she takes us through the journey of her day-to-day -day work, her day-to-day -day life, and her day-to-day -day laughter and experiences, one of which includes her love, her love for Prosecco. She is a Prosecco queen, a Prosecco connoisseur. She really loves white wines. I believe she really likes champagne. And so honestly, there's so many moments where we kind of see her just taste different type of wines. And so that's really where this idea came up with, um, where this idea came from, where I was just like, what if, what if you did something with wine? So what does that look like? Okay. <clears throat> I might show something at the side of the screen actually. So actually I'll do that at the end. Cause I actually made like a website prototype of some ideas that I was kind of coming up with. So welcome to Lydia's wine club. Yes. There are a few logistical things that I want to get out of the way. So when it comes to Lydia Dinga, she is, she's working with a smaller team, smaller amounts of capital. And so I really think that it would be important for her to think of getting into wine in the most strategic way as possible while also staying as far away from the production of the wine as possible. Um, really the goal with this sort of idea is to find somebody who is already in the wine space so that you don't have to figure all of that in of itself. So the first person we kind of bring to the stage in terms of like, what would a good partnership be? Oh yeah, also another thing with Lydia Dinga, she really, really has made a concerted effort over, you know, the past few years, um, especially the past two years to feature a lot of black owned businesses and black owned brands. And so 
as it pertains to alcohol consumption and wine, I thought it would be really great for her to take a flight and come over to the United States. Um, so for those of you that don't know, the United States are the largest consumers of wine. Um, I believe 43% men, 57% uh, women. And so the United States would be a really great place to kind of test out these wine kind of ideas. Uh, so I'm obviously making a few assumptions here. Let's say that her demographic is majority Europe and United Kingdom. Then of course she wants to kind of try and frame this idea in the context of where she could do a really great test run. And a really great test run for a product like this or for a collaboration or partnership like this really depends on the Carfax, the data. You guys will hear me say that over and over again. A lot of the ideas that I come up with, I have to do a lot of research for. Um, sometimes I have to call some friends about. Sometimes I'm just having to pull certain data sets. So I am using like real data when I'm coming up with this and I'm having to make assumptions about, you know, where does her majority of these sort of customers reside, ages this from this reside, you know, how much do these people engage with her work both on YouTube, because obviously you guys know her as a YouTube, I know her as a YouTube, but she also has a very healthy Instagram account as well. And so these are all things that I feel like you have to consider if you are trying to ideate a product. So with that said, she needs to take a flight. She needs to fly Delta. She needs to come all the way, oh, not sponsor Delta, please. <laughs> You need to fly all the way from London town and come and meet me here. Come and meet me here either in New York so that we can go over. We're going to go. Actually, no, not in New York. Let's go to the West Coast because we will be heading to Portland, Oregon to meet Mr. Andre Houston Mack. So for those of you that do not know, Andre Houston Mack is the owner and winemaker of Maison Noir, and it is a black owned company, a black owned wine vineyard and winemaking company. Listen, in terms of partnerships, I would say Andre Mack would be one of the best partners to go with. There are a lot of black owned companies, um, black owned wine companies, black owned wine, also vineyards in the United States that I could be mentioning. But this was just one of the people that I was like, this is one of your best bets. If you could score a partnership with this guy, <laughs> he could really help you move to the best step, next steps, even if you don't do a partnership with his vineyard directly. So Andre <laughs> defines himself, and I quote, as an iconoclastic sommelier. <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> okay, let me stop, let me stop. But yes, he is, a, a, he is a sommelier, he is Black American, and he is actually, I don't want to say eclectic, because that's not what I, I don't know, he seems really fun, very casual, chill. Um, I'll talk about his background in a second, but like, he has really integrated his Black American heritage, I believe he's from South Carolina, into the sort of wines that he makes and, and even how he names some of his products. So you guys can go check that out. Um, but, you know, why Andre? Why is he the one? Why is he the star? Andre, for those of you that don't know, he obviously, <laughs> I just figured this out as well. Um, he actually used to work, I believe he was like an SVP of one of Citigroup's investment divisions, hashtag loaded, hashtag rich, but also hashtag connections. He is a dot connector. Okay. When we start talking about venture capital and, you know, those people that have all that money, they have connections. They have connections, especially when we talk about these people who are in charge of like corporate kind of divisions, you know, like a Goldman Sachs, a Bain and Capital, um, Bain and Co., um, Morgan uh, Stanley. Uh, I don't know if they're one of the management. Wh whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But he has a lot of connections. Okay. Also, another thing with I think he was able to leverage his connections because he also has a full distributor list. He has a full wholesale distributor list throughout the United States and throughout the Asia Pacific APAC region. So like Vietnam, uh, Japan, China. Um, uh, Pakistan. Wait, no, Pakistan is not in Asia. No, no, no. But in the Asia Pacific. So like the Asia Pacific region, you can't see my hands, but like the East. Um, he also has connections with, he also has a distributor connection with Europe and also the United Kingdom. So places for Ireland, places for England, um, places I mean, just all over, all over. And this is actually something I noticed that some of these other black owned winemakers just did not have. This is crucial. In the United States, he is literally in retailers. You could probably find one of his wines in like a Whole Foods or a Target or like a wines and spirits store. Multitude of solidified contracts he already has in place. Very, very strategic move. Okay, so 
really great partner to partner up with. He is black owned. He does really care about kind of the work he does and he continue continuously tries to find ways to give back to black American communities and black communities um, all over the world. So let me pause with it. So let's get into the wine club of itself. You know, I said at the beginning of this video, okay, she could maybe make a wine of her own. She could, but why start with the wine club? So e-commerce for wine sales is literally like the golden star in terms of where the industry is moving because the wine industry itself is extremely profitable and obviously and not obviously but the profit range it varies from like at what stage of your business you're you're selling to so like for example wines and uh restaurants and bars the profit margin for selling wine is about 60 percent very high but for places where you go directly to a vineyard and maybe they sell wines there the profit margin is about like 12 to like 20 percent and then maybe in certain places if you yeah you know just to, if you're buying like buying um wine by like wholesale or like in bulk then it's about maybe 20 to maybe 27 percent um and so instead of kind of trying to figure out all of that <laughs> trying to figure out all of that and even hosting your own events which she could um i'll talk about that at the very end she really could be looking to manufacturers who are trying to become digitized or manufacturers who are already moving into the e-commerce marketplace space and do a partnership with them and essentially have it be white labeled. Manufacturers at this moment in time see it's like 15% growth increase of revenue with e-commerce marketplace sales alone and so they are looking for these virtual brands they are looking for virtual brands to continuously find ways to leverage their wine that they already make the grapes that they've already tasted the sommeliers that have already tasted their wines to continuously sell it in an increasingly digitized world so just in case you don't partner with like an andre you know look for a manufacturer and essentially i think now i can kind of show a the prototype I was kind of working on you guys can see here essentially you want to go through the process of getting these kind of wines together and 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 finding the experiences and and wines that would work for you so either she could do like a partnership with Andre and and work that way through his front end or you just work with a marketplace um work with an e-commerce marketplace that's already up and if she doesn't want to do that she could do this welcome Dia Dean Wine Club. Okay, I said I spelled that with an E and an A because I was saying it out loud in English. I was writing like Dia Dean, like Lydia Dinga, but when I said D I N, I pronounced it as Din, even though I know her her last name is Ding Dinga. So I put like an E A. I was gonna put like a D E E N or like a D E A. So phonetically, um, but it doesn't matter. You can still spell it with like a Dia Din or Dia Dean um, Wine Club. It doesn't matter. So. Editing me, roll the clip so I can show you guys what this looks like. Hey everybody, Editing Q here. So welcome to Dia Dean, Ha Wine Club. So I would say this is a specific use case, like if she partners with Andre or a manufacturer and they kind of go the white labeling route where, you know, I have a platform and I can just distribute and set up like a marketplace infrastructure for like subscription wine clubs and then they could essentially provide as a wine partner wines on their behalf to Lydia for like a wine club and so this was kind of the concept this is kind of a prototype website I made I have always wanted to teach like an interactive web design class um, but you know I kind of threw this together <laughs> I had to throw this together quickly but yeah a part of the product ideation process on my end is kind of coming up with sometimes visual design and user interface design so I've always wanted to kind of teach a no code like website builder where people can really throw things together and so you guys will probably be able to see more and more of this work probably in the baby plantain video because I kind of thought of some stuff for her um, I kind of made this because I was just trying to visualize what what I could possibly see as her wine club, putting her at the front and center of everything and then getting into here are the plans so then people could kind of order either monthly um, or quarterly um, or I think it's like monthly, quarterly or every six months. Is that right? So yeah, I also wanted people to be able to choose like you could choose all reds or all whites or a mixture um, because of course, you know, she loves white wine. She loves Prosecco. I know Prosecco and white wine is not the same, but 
I was like, which is which? Um, but for those of you that don't know, Prosecco is wine that is produced and made in Italy, even though it is a white wine. Um, so, you know, just kind of like fine details, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but yes, and then she can kind of portray, you know, who are the people that she's partnering with. And I think this would be a great place to show here are some of the black owned winemakers that I am working with to kind of make this happen. Um, so this is kind of a use case of if she did a wine club, it would be kind of an e-commerce marketplace standpoint where people are subscribing people would be on a wait list she would be able to have enough time to build up enough hype for it and pre-sell i think would be really great for removing so not only is she able to remove her hands from the production but also kind of testing and getting a gauge for how could something like this work out last one that i want to mention is this place in greece that she frequents i don't know if she has a partnership deal with them but I noticed that she kind of frequents some of these hotels um, in certain places of the world. And one of those is like the Agiliano Hotel in Greece. So in terms of like events and experiences, I was also thinking she could possibly broker a deal um, with some of these hotels. And she could essentially say, hey, I come to this place and people have come to this hotel because of me. I want you guys to feature something called the Lydia Dinga or Dia Dean tasting wine tasting experience. And as I, if you recall, restaurants and bars have a very, very high markup um, in terms of their profit margin. And so I think this would also be an interesting kind of partnership deal that removes her hands from the logistics where she doesn't need to be there, but it's something that's giving her money in perpetuity. All right, going back to me and the outro. Come on, Q, you could do this. Thank you so much for watching another one of my tapes, okay? I need you right now. Listen, listen. A wine glass. A wine glass right now. A bottle of wine right now. In the comment section below. You guys, oh my gosh. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sorry, I put my hand in front of my face. You see the way my emoji like. <laughs> but yes. Okay, so a few announcements for next week. I will be having a few lives. I've been hinting at it, but I've just been trying to set it up like technologically on my end. And like it went well, but then the app I was going to use like discontinued like a function I needed. So I I'm going to figure out a way to do it where unfortunately, like you guys won't be able to see like my full range of like motion. But, you know, I, I figured out kind of a midway. And then as time goes on, I'll continue finding more software that I could possibly use. Um, OK, I have a Monday. I have a video coming on Monday. All I'm going to say is, please do not share this video, okay? Not this video. Please share this video with Lydia Dinga. I mean, the, the video that I'm going to post next has to do with TikTok, talent managers, and extortion. I did sign an NDA, so obviously I'm not mentioning any names or any deal flows. But I'm going to be honest, if too many people watch that video coming on Monday, I might have to take it down. <laughs> but it must be said. It must be said, and you're not ready. And you're not ready. And you're not ready. $240,000, poof, disappear. And that's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much for watching another one of my tapes. And I will, go I will see you guys soon. Also, also, I didn't say this in the lives, but you guys are cordially invited to my virtual sleepover. So put a crescent moon emoji if you want to come. Um, I, I want to have multiple lives a week, but there's a one particular live that I want it to be like virtual sleepovers where we can just kind of decompress, like nothing too kind of high energy. You know what I mean? The other lives that I want to do are more like talking about topics happening during the week. And so I will definitely be hype about them because I think about a lot of stuff going on during the week, if that makes sense. So for certain things in like the virtual sleepovers, it I, I may or may not leave them up. I'm not sure. Um, but you, I'm just trying to distinguish that some of the lives are like not exactly the same. So I will be inviting you guys to a virtual sleepover. Those will happen once a week. And then I'll have like regular lives sprinkled throughout the week. Ah, okay. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the future. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Also, um, yeah, any blueprint episodes people you want me to talk about please put that below i am making a list um so put them below i've started to make a list in my notes app so yeah bye Mwah.